Welcome, I'm Catherine Paquet. In a previous recording, we discussed actually managing and monitoring your ESA using CLI and the GUI. We will continue build on that concept in this recording. In this recording, we'll talk about the email security monitor, which is the GUI way of monitoring what's happening in your ESA. We will also talk about message tracking and the logs. From the GUI, the most left menu is called the Email Security Monitor. And in the Email Security Monitor, you will be using it actually to monitor uh, the domains that are connecting to your appliance. You will also using, use it to view report. And you can use view the report, a schedule report. You can have those report um, exported if you wanted to in CSV value uh, or in PDF value. We will also use the monitor menu to track messages. To track messages, actually, let's say you got a phone call. And the phone call is, uh, well, I was getting an email from, uh, from nancy at gmail.com, and I never received it. So then you can ask the person who calls you at the help desk, you know, uh, do you know the subject of the email? What was the name, the email address of who's sending it to you? Do you have an, an idea of the time frame where that email was sent? And what you're trying to do with message tracking is find out, was that email received? You remember that actually, if you backtrack a little bit and we think about our pipeline, we have actually the SMTP server. That's my listener listening on port 25. We have the, SMT, uh, the, uh, the work queue. Actually, we don't call it the SMTP. We just call it the work queue. And then we have the SMTP client. So the email will arrive. And on our port 25, we will listen. Should we accept that conversation or not? We accept the conversation. We receive the email. We look at this email just to make sure from the point of view of the server that everything looks good. And then we'll pass it to the work queue. And in the work queue, that's where the antivirus, the anti-spam, the outbreak filters, AMP, that's where all those things will take place on that email. And if any of these find something weird about that email or some, some kind of violation, it's possible that they will either have deleted the email or they might also have put it into quarantine before and eventually that email will be given to the SMTP client portion on the ESA to be sent out. So if someone calls you and say, there's a problem with an email, I didn't get it, you're trying to find out where is that email stuck. Maybe the email was not accepted from the get-go because the sender's domain has a bad reputation. Maybe that email was accepted and our anti-spam looking through this email discovered that that was suspect spam and it put it into quarantine. In which case, you can tell the client, the customer who just called you, your users just called you, say, hey, log to your spam. Quarantine, have a look. That's where the email from Nancy is sitting. And finally, you want to see if the email was really processed and released when was it processed and where was it released? Because maybe the problem is not with the ESA. Maybe the problem is with the Exchange server that, for whatever reason, dropped the ball or is not showing up this message. When we're doing tracking, the tracking can be done locally. That would be done on your local ESA. Or it could also be done centrally on your SMA. So if you think about, let's say that you have a low balancer. Low balancer goes through a firewall, and maybe that's the internet over here. And let's say you have a few ESAs sitting over here. If someone asks you, um, I don't have this email, could you track it for me? You don't want to have to load, to, to log on two separate ASAs to try to find a message. What would be neat, actually, is if you can have a SMA on your network, security management uh, appliance. And when you have an SMA, you can do what we call centralized tracking. Each of those devices will actually send to the SMA the metadata regarding that message. 
So you basically have only one place to log and say, SMA, could you tell me if user John has received an email from Nancy? And this guy has actually the, um, the metadata of all the email that was processed by the ASA1 and ASA2. And this guy can tell you, yep, that email was received by ESA2 and processed through the work queue and when sent out and gives you a timestamp at what time the ESA2 did send out that email. So when we want to track a message, uh, we can track a message actually by um, what's the sender. Um, so actually, let me just go back a few slides just to show you something. So when we're doing message tracking, you can have very, very simple message tracking, such as who is the sender, who's the receiver, uh, subject of the email. So we're basically looking here at the envelope information. What about if you're looking for something more precisely? What about you want to see, show me all the email between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m that have been seen by my antivirus. So you could do that. You could say actually, or virus positive, show me all the email between 2 and 3 p.m. that have turned out to be virus positive. You can also search by email through message ID. So each message that is being accepted by your ESA will receive its unique message ID. I will show you a little bit later on using the CLI how you could actually look for a message if you know the message ID. Message ID is something internal to the ESA, so you, it's easier to find it. Uh, to, you can find it by at the CLI, and from that information at the CLI, you can come back at the GUI and track that message also. Log subscription. So the most important log that we have inside the ESA is the mail log. So we will definitely want to have a mail log. A mail log, that's where we keep track of the incoming mail, the processes that we're going through the mail queue, and then the mail leaving the organization. But there's all sorts of other uh, logs also that we can have. So if we look at here, we can have actually uh, like error log or maybe my empty spam log, AMP. Uh, what has been processed through AMP? What is my tech connectivity with AMP Cloud? When was the last time I got an update? Stuff like that. So to look at which log I have, which log have been set up, you go under log subscription well, under the system administration, log subscription, and that's where you can look at your different log. This is also where you could go and decide if you want the log to be resident on the ESA, or if you'd like to have that log actually also copied to an external destination. Your ESA is able to listen to the honest FTP. So it does listen on F, the, the FTP port. So you can go under uh, an interface, an IP interface, and say if you want that IP interface to also provide a service for FTP. And this way, as an administrator, you can simply do your FTP to your ESA if you happen to know the, 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 the host name or the IP address of the interface that you wish usually would be the management interface that you want to connect to. And therefore, you can download log yourself manually this way. Now, what about the mail log? So I mentioned to you that in my mind, the most important log we have on the ESA is the mail log. So it's a good skill to develop to learn how to tell a log, tell or grab. You could also grab that log. But in this particular example, actually, uh, what I, I'm using, I'm tailing actually the mail log. So how do we tell the mail log? So let me clean up the slide. So on your ESA at the CLI, and how do you access the CLI of your, of your ESA? Well, console port or SSH inside that box. You will type the command tail, could be grep, but in this particular slide is tail, and mail log. So tail, what does tail mean? Tail means show me the latest entry, the last entries that made it to that log, show them to me. 
And right now we're telling the log. And what, why I want to show you that, guys, is actually, or everybody, girls too, everyone, is actually I'd like to show you how you can see the whole process of the SMTP server, the work queue, and the SMTP client. So we have here at the top here, we have the connection. So I wrote connection just over here. So we see that we have an incoming injection connection ID. So ICID stands for injection connection ID, and it's connection number 143. And it's arriving on my data one interface, my listener data one. And we see here what was who is trying to send us that ad that that, that try to connect to do a SMTP connection onto us. We will also do a reverse DNS to try to find the name because something I didn't mention before, but the Tell us, tell us keeps track actually of bad actors on the internet by IP address, but also by host name. So if you have a spammer that gets kicked out, he gets kicked out of one service provider, move to another service provider, keep the same host name. Okay, he's on a new address, but he's still a spammer. So we are doing actually we're checking not only the IP address, but we're doing a reverse. Um, a reverse lookup also on that IP address to get the host name. And then we are, uh, and the host name actually will become a more uh, obvious when we do drink the handshake. We will be able to look at that host name of the, of the connecting MTA and decide if he's a good actor or a bad actor. And um, if all is good, now we have, we, we're gonna accept. So why do we decide to accept? We'll have more on that in an upcoming recording, but we will accept that TCP. And we accept that TCP session. We'll come back on, this, uh, on all what you're seeing over here, the suspect list, the SBRS. But basically the big point of here is that we're accepting the connection. So if we are accepting the connection, we will then start getting the message. So when we're getting the message, we will get actually this connection 143 happens to be also message 143. By the way, it would not have to necessarily match because think about if during that one connection, which is connection 143, we receive two email. Well, maybe the first email would be 143, that's pure coincidence, but maybe the second email would be actually message ID 144. So your connection, if I get a second message during the same conversation, well, my second message would be actually message ID 144. So I don't want you to leave the slide thinking that the message ID and the connection ID are always the same, not necessarily. It just happened to be like that on this particular example. And then we see here our, uh, we see here our header. So over here we have our header. So we have, this, we have the from, subject, who is it to. And finally we are accepting the message and the message will be processed through the work queue. So the work queue here, when you see the injection ID close, what are we doing? We have finished, we're closing the SMTP server. That message is now being looked at by my work queue. If the message survived my work queue, then the message will be passed to the third step that we have on the ESA, which is the client, and therefore the ESA will prepare that message to then send it out to our, in this case, let's say our internal uh, mail server. So what have we see in this uh, session? Well, we discussed actually the email security monitor, uh, and we spent quite a bit of time talking about tracking. How can we track a message from the GUI and all the different options we can look, not only by time, date, senders, receivers, show me an email that has that's, that is spam positive as an example. And we finished by talking with logging and I added a few slides actually how to tell the mail log. Because telling the mail log will help us dissect very precisely an email and pinpoint what's happening with an email and how the ESA is dealing with that email. Thank you very much for listening.